Chapter 2, Discovering Your Dark Heritage Learning that one is among the proud few who possess the ability to utilize dark magic seldom comes as a complete surprise from the dark traditions. The stunned silence that followed Wayland's declaration lasted only a few seconds. What? Ricky's eyes widened and began to look frantic as their, look frantic as their surroundings registered. How? Where is this? What did you do? We are in Zeridwin, Wayland repeated in a patient tone. This is, he paused, and the skull-painted mask turned from side to side. This is the stone circle of Zeridwin. His hand went to the hilt of his sword, though he did not draw it. Fine, take us back to the fair, Ricky said, pulling Del closer. Take us back right now. Wayland ignored her. My lady, we should make our way to the castle immediately, he said to Kayla. Let's see if this m'lady stuff is good for anything, Kayla thought. It'd be easier to talk if we could see you, she told Wayland. Wayland spread his arms out in front of him, and the skull mask tilted to look at them. See me? he said in a confused tone. Take off the mask, Kayla explained. Of course, my lady. Wayland pushed back the hood of his cape, then shoved the skull mask to the top of his head. He had curly dark brown hair and a pleasant round face that currently wore a slightly worried expression. He looked about the same age as Ricky, as near as Kayla could tell. Could we begin walking now, my lady? We're not going anywhere with you, Ricky told him. Her grip on Kayla tightened uncomfortably. I bet we have to, Dell said in a slightly shaky voice. He peered around cautiously, his eyes wide and his expression wobbling between fright, uncertainty, and curiosity. Curiosity seemed to be winning. That's how it works in the books and movies, when people get dumped in another world. I thought you wanted Wayland to take us back to the state fair, Kayla put in. Wayland put... Wayland's eyes narrowed. He kept them fixed on Ricky as he asked Kayla, My lady, if I may be so bold as to ask, which sort are your adoptive parents? What do you mean, which sort? Kayla let her mother pull her back another few inches before she planted her feet and resisted. Should they be rewarded and revered for their protection and care in raising you to this age, or should they be imprisoned and tortured for abusing and neglecting you? Wayland's tone was matter of fact, but his right hand had gone back to fingering the hilt of his sword. Kayla's jaw dropped. What? That does it, Ricky said. I'm calling 911. She let go of Kayla to rummage in her tote bag. I don't think you can, Mom, Dell told her. Watch me, Ricky said without looking up. Suddenly she dropped the bag. A mouse! There's a mouse! Her voice rose as she backed away, eyes wide. Mom? Dell sounded puzzled. Kayla wasn't as surprised by Ricky's reaction. Normally their mother would take an unexpected mouse in stride, but nothing about this situation was normal. Wayland leaned forward and plucked the tote from the ground. He glanced inside and reached in. Were you looking for this? He asked. In the palm of his hand sat a creature about the size and shape of a gerbil. Its fur was the same lavender color as Ricky's ancient flip phone had been. Ricky stared at it, her mouth opening and closing without sound. What is that? And where did it come from? Part of Kayla wanted to come unglued, but somebody had to stay calm and ask the right questions. She'd learned that and done it during Michael's long illness. She could do it again now. It is a messenger mouse, my lady, Wayland replied. It is a result of our travel between worlds. There are always things from one place that do not exist in the other. Those things cannot cease to exist, so they change to the closest equivalent. If it is part of what makes it, it is part of what makes such travel difficult, the spells require enough power to accommodate the changes in the equipment. I would hazard a guess that this, he lifted the lavender gerbil, is, in your world, some way of sending messages from one person to another. It must have been Mom's cell phone, Kayla said numbly. It's the right color. Dell stared at the lavender mouse. Mom's phone turned into that gerbil thing? Messenger mouse, Whaley corrected him. Yes. He held it out towards, toward Ricky, who backed away. With a shrug, Waylon tucked the mouse into a pouch hanging from his belt. He offered the tote bag back to Ricky. After a long moment, she reached forward and snatched it out of his hand. Are all messenger mice that color? Dell persisted. What about Kayla paused? She was sure that when she'd first seen Waylon at the fair, he'd been wearing body armor. The vest underneath his cape was still there. But the green and black pattern looked natural, like overlapping scales. It definitely wasn't police armor. Uh, what about that? She finished on a mortifying squeak. Waylon looked down. What? Oh, my dragon skin vest. It changed several times during my search. Evidently, very few worlds have dragons. He sounded disapproving and faintly disappointed. But, 
Kayla stopped and took a quick inventory. Her t-shirt and cotton shorts were unchanged, but her running shoes had morphed into soft leather ankle boots. Dell and Ricky were wearing similar footgear. Ricky's canvas tote seemed the same, but her baseball cap had become a high-crowned cloth hat with a folded brim that looked like something from a Robin Hood movie. Kayla, Ricky was staring at her outstretched hand with a reproachful expression, what have you done to your nails? Kayla looked down and barely suppressed another squeak. Instead of being painted with green glitter, her fingernails were, were encrusted with neat rows of tiny emeralds. It's just the glitter polish you let me buy last week at the dollar store. That's not glitter. It is the mark of magic, said a soft and airy voice. Before it had quite finished, Wayland's sword was out of its sheath. In a smooth motion, he stepped sideways, putting himself between Kayla's family and the speaker. Show yourself, he commanded. A girl stepped out from behind one of the standing stones. She looked smaller and younger than Dell, though some of that might have been because she was so thin. Her hair hung in limp tangles to well below her shoulders. Its exact color was impossible to determine because of the gray dust that coated it. Her dress looked as if it had been made by cutting holes in a sack for her head and arms, and her feet were bare. She looked pathetic, until her eyes met Kayla's. They were the same deep gray as the stones of the circle, flecked with sparks of light and darkness. If it bothers you, I can remove it, or at least the appearance of it, she offered, nodding toward Kayla's hands. Is taking it off going to cause problems? The girl tipped her head from side to side. Those who know its meaning will treat you differently, for good or ill, if they can see these outward accidents. Accidents? Those outward parts of your life that are not of your choosing, the girl replied. Accidents such as the place and circumstances of your birth, your family, your health, the wealth you inherit or do not, and so on. Some you may change with great effort. Others are immutable. She gestured at Kayla's fingers. The mark is an outward accident that reveals the inward substance of your magic. My magic? Kayla didn't feel any different than she had at the state fair. Well, apart from being cold. But how would she know what magic felt like? She considered for a moment. Would it be better to have proof of being marked or not? Her father had always said that he'd rather be underestimated than overestimated. She nodded questioningly at Ricky, who hesitated, then nodded back. Okay, Kayla said and started forward. My lady, Waylon objected. What? She at least asked what I wanted before she did anything. Reluctantly, Wayland lowered his sword. Kayla held her hands out toward the girl, who bowed her head over them. Kayla felt a sensation like a freezing wind and a sharp electric jolt at once. The emeralds disappeared, leaving her nails bare. There, the girl said, sounding satisfied. Can you send us home? Ricky asked over Wayland's discontented muttering. The girl's eyes flickered, and for a moment she looked afraid. Then she shook her head. Not now. Who or what are you? Wayland demanded. The girl's eyes unfocused, an echo, a memory, a shadow of the past and the future. What does that even mean? Kayla growled. Between weird fantasy villains who could dink them off to a different world and mysterious children who couldn't give a straight answer, she was getting more than a little cross. The girl shrugged. The others call me the spirit of the stones. It's as good a label as any. What others? Kayla asked. The other ones who seek to become lords or ladies? Sometimes they ensnare this me for a while. She tilted her head like a small bird looking for a bug. Will you seize this me? I'm not setting out to be a lady. Kayla's head was starting to hurt. Behind her, Del snorted. Good thing, too. The girl smiled at Del, then focused on Kayla once more. You were different from the others. That and she glanced at Del and Ricky. Her smile vanished and her eyebrows drew close together. You came together. Who are you? That's my mom and my little brother, Kayla said. The girl nodded slowly. Choice can mean more than blood. She raised her chin, staring at Dell. As she moved, Kayla caught a glimpse of red on the underside of her hair. Theirs and yours. An impossibility is still impossible when it stands before you. And yet, is there. Until it isn't. Ricky stepped forward and shoved Dell behind her. What are you talking about? Magic, the girl said, as if it should have been obvious. Kayla felt like she'd missed half the conversation. Her only consolation was that Wayland, Wayland and Ricky looked just as confused as she felt. Change happens. People learn, some of them, the girl went on. Her eyes went out of focus once more. Some refuse, though. That never stops the changes. Could you please stop talking in riddles? Kayla said as politely as she could manage. Riddles are fun, and they're traditional on both sides of the border, which is more than you can say about almost anything else. The girl focused on Kayla once more, and her expression relaxed. I'm glad you came this way. It's been so very nice to meet you, and I don't think I would have otherwise. Not all of you, anyway. Good luck. 
She made a small curtsy and stepped back behind the nearest standing stone. Stay here, Waylon growled at, at Kayla. He surged forward and disappeared around the back of the standing stone. Ricky hesitated, then grabbed Dell as he tried to follow. follow. Waylon appeared on the other side of the stone, his eyebrows drawn together and his lips pressed together in frustration. She's gone, he told them as he returned his sword to his sheath. Who or what was that? Kayla asked. The spirit of the stones, Waylon said heavily. He glared at Ricky. We were not meant to arrive here. It is too dangerous. Ricky glared right back. Dangerous? More than you? I am a danger only to those who threaten my lady. Waylon said, the stone circles, on the other hand, are places of unpredictable magic. Only the strongest mages dare to use them, and even they cannot completely control their results. He frowned at Kayla. You took a great risk in treating with her. Is that why Mom's cell phone turned into that mouse thing? Dell asked, because we're in a stone circle. No, Waylon replied. It is the travel between worlds that changes one thing into another, though arriving inside the circle may have enhanced the effect somewhat. So everything we brought that we... Everything we brought that you don't have here has changed, Kayla broke off, feeling suddenly horrified. <gasps> Macavinci! Good morning, madame, a deep British voice said from the backpack slung over her shoulder, and Kayla breathed a sigh of relief. Then she felt something move, and she slid the nylon pack off to look inside. At least it had been a nylon backpack when they left home. Now it was made of green leather and looked classier than the ones Kayla had been yearning for at the International Bazaar. The shoulder straps curled through two ornate silver buckles instead of cheap plastic slides, and the zippers had been replaced with silver buttons. I guess they don't have nylon or plastic here, Kayla thought numbly. The backpack moved again. Cautiously, Kayla lifted the flap that had been the zipper, or that had replaced the zipper, fumbling a little when the backpack shifted in her hands. A small, monkey-like face peered out at her. It was covered in rust-red fur and had eyes so black that she couldn't tell whether they had pupils. Kayla, get back, Ricky cried. Kayla ignored her. Macavinci? Yes, madame, the thing in the backpack said in the British accent she'd spent so long choosing the night before. A, teeny a tiny pair of hands with long black fingers gripped the edges of the opening. An instant later, the creature pulled and wriggled its way out into the open. It crawled onto Kayla's arm, wrapped its tail twice around her wrist, and she finally got a good look at it. The thing that had been her tablet computer now resembled a spider monkey with cat ears. Its face was a little flatter than the faces of the monkeys at the zoo, and its fur was longer and redder, but it had the same flexible tail. It shook itself, and a pair of red wings like a bat's unfolded from its back. This is a vast improvement, it announced, and it proceeded to climb onto Kayla's shoulder, where it settled in and wrapped his tail around her neck. Get off my daughter, Ricky shouted and made a grab for the creature. There was a flash and a crackle, and Ricky was flung backward. She landed in the dust several feet away, barely missing one of the standing stones. Mom, Kayla cried. She took a step forward, then realized that it might not be a good idea to bring the monkey thing closer to her mother. Macavinci, what did you just do? I performed no direct action, the creature on Kayla's shoulder said. It sounded embarrassed. Dell was at Ricky's side, staring at the winged monkey. Ricky shook herself and climbed to her feet, brushing dust from her shorts. She didn't seem hurt, only shocked, so Kayla turned back to the thing on her shoulder. Then what happened? Your adoptive parents, sudden proximity, activated my security system, madame. The creature definitely sounded embarrassed. It was quite involuntary, I assure you. Security system, Wayland said, plainly puzzled. No one explained. What the heck are you? Ricky snapped. The embarrassed tone, combined with the deep-voiced British accent and the formal phrasing, appeared to have reassured her slightly, but she was still watching the winged creature warily. Macavinci did not reply. It is a, f a familiar, Wayland said, though he sounded a little doubtful. It is probably like the messenger mouse, something that could not translate unaltered to this world. Is he right? Kayla asked. The second commander's explanation is correct, the thing replied promptly. To be more specific, I am Macavinci, a, pre a premier semi-autonomous construct, usually referred to as a magical familiar, currently bonded to Kayla Jones. In addition to the standard features common to familiars, I possess a maximum memory upgrade and expanded power capabilities, as well as the latest top-notch security features. Were you really Kayla's tablet? Dell asked, wide-eyed. Once again, Macavinci did not answer. Kayla sighed. She was definitely getting a headache. Macavinci, were you my computer? Yes, madame. Ricky opened her mouth, then closed it. She took a deep breath, then another, and said, Kayla, ask it to take us home. Okay. Kayla didn't think it would do much good, but it was easier to ask than to argue, especially with the mood Ricky was in. Macavinci? 
I am not capable of transporting persons across the dimensional boundaries, Makavinci said before she finished answering, uh, finished asking, asking the question. He snapped his wings open, tucked his chin, and added in a pointed tone, Neither familiars nor computers are vehicles. If you wanted transportation, you should have brought a bicycle or an automobile. My lady, Wayland put in, can we please continue this discussion as we walk? I am not certain why we arrived here instead of in the castle courtyard, nor can I guarantee that our passage was not detected by those who wish you ill. Also, he hesitated, we will be much safer at the castle. Kayla had the distinct impression that he had intended to say something else. She started to ask what, but just then Dell nudged up against her. This place is creepy, he said, even if the monkey is kind of cool. The monkey is not cool, Ricky objected, just as Makavinci said indignantly. I am not a monkey. Yeah, it's creepy, Kayla said to Dell, but the castle looks even creepier. She nodded toward the distant tower, silhouetted against the gray sky, and suppressed a shiver. She hadn't realized until Dell's comment just how quiet everything was. The empty space and the absence of people were only part of it. There was no traffic noise, no whir of fans or hum of air conditioners, no distant jackhammers doing road construction. It made everyone's voice seem unnaturally loud. Even the whisper of a breeze, too gentle to stir the dust that covered everything, was startling. We should leave immediately, Wayland repeated. There are things more threatening than that spirit, which may be attracted to the magic of the circle. Kayla noticed that he did not say that the other things were more dangerous. My lady, why should we trust you? Kayla cut off Wayland's plea. Under the circum current circumstances, you have no reason to, Makavinci said from her shoulder. Ricky looked at the winged monkey with guarded approval. Wayland looked hurt. I assure you, my lady, that I mean you no ill. Yes, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Kayla said distractedly. Makavinci? She thought for a moment and then asked carefully, what's the quickest way of making sure we can trust Waylon? Makavinci made a purring sound, then said, a formal oath of allegiance with additional conditions taken by Commander Waylon and magically certified would fulfill those conditions. Ricky frowned. We're supposed to trust him because he swears he's trustworthy? I am already sworn to the Dark Lady of Zeradwin, Waylon said indignantly. Please don't shout, Kayla turned her head to look at Makavinci, ignoring the two adults. Why do you think an oath will work? A formal oath of allegiance, Makavinci corrected her. Oaths are far more serious in this world than in your homeland. And as the prospective Dark Lady of Zeradwin, you may add magically enforceable conditions to the standard oath. This would provide you with the assurance you asked for in the shortest possible time. Wayland looked as if he were about to explode. Kayla took a step backward, unsure whether she should ask about the magic first or prospective dark lady. You have license to claim the title, but you have not yet done so, Makavinci explained. Once you have made your claim, you must be formally invested and recognized before you officially become the dark lady. Also, your claim may be contested. She is Zavrielina. Daughter of the Dor Dark Lord Zavriel of Zeradwin, Wayland burst out. No one would contest her right to become the next Dark Lady. Zavrielina, Delmar said, revolted. That's a dumb name. For once, I actually agree with. Wait a minute, Dark Lord? You mean this guy you say was my father was one of the bad guys? Bad guys, Wayland's forehead wrinkled. He was a Dark Lord, the greatest Zeradwin has seen in centuries. Ricky was staring at Waylon through narrowed eyes. Kayla, ask that ex-computer thing if it can tell whether this guy is telling the truth, she said. Makavinci, Kayla paused. Can you just answer mom's questions without me repeating them all of the time? Not at present, madame. The furry tail around Kayla's neck was twitched. Your mother has not been authorized for information access. Just ask him if Waylon is telling the truth, Ricky said. I cannot lie to my liege lady, Wayland said, staring at Makavinci with a puzzled expression. That is the oddest familiar I have ever seen. He's odd for a computer, too, but I like him, Kayla said. Makavinci purred in her ear and patted the top of her head. Wayland shook himself and looked around the empty fields that surrounded them. His right hand twitched toward the, the hilt of his sword. Then he took a deep breath and looked at Kayla. My lady, if it will persuade you to move to safer ground, I will swear whatever oath you oath may please you. But I beg you, do not delay any further. The only place we're going with you is back to the fair, Ricky's pronouncement would have been more convincing if her voice hadn't been shaking. The eerie quiet was getting to her too. Can you take us back? Waylon asked, or Kayla asked Waylon. No, my lady, Waylon said. He reached into his belt pouch. 
and pulled something out, then held it toward Kayla. It was the same gesture he had used bef just before the four of them had disappeared from the fairgrounds, but instead of something red and glowing, his hand held a smooth rock the color of, of cold ashes. I am no mage. Only the power of the Dark Lord's token allowed me to cross from world to world to seek you, and bring us here, and bringing us here exhausted the last of its power. It gave Ricky and Dell a dark look. It was never meant to transport so many. Kayla bent forward. The top of the rock bore the faint outline of a skull with something wrapped around its forehead. Can it be recharged? I do not know, Waylon said, but the Dark Lord himself created it in the seat of his power. If it can be renewed or if another can be forged, it will be there. His eyes flicked up toward the tower that loomed beyond or loomed above the dead forest. Kayla looked from Wayland's worried expression to the omni omni ominous silhouette of the tower on the distant mountaintop, the empty fields around the standing stones, and the dead forest between them. A puff of wind rustled the dry grass and sent a tiny dust devil, dust devil whirling around the base of the stones, and Kayla shivered. Nothing else moved or made a sound. Whatever had rattled had stopped. She tried to think. Out in the open, there was little chance of anything sneaking up on them, but there was also nowhere to hide. And if there were dragons in this world, I don't think we have much choice, Mom, she said. I don't, Ricky broke off, looking around the dreary landscape as if she had only just noticed it. This place. Her voice trailed off and she shivered. It's creepy, Del said matter-of-factly. I said that before. Ricky took a deep breath and looked at Macavinci. You really think the oath will be a good I would be a good idea? Macavinci remained silent. Kayla sighed and repeated the question. No, Macavinci said. It would be a very bad idea. Macavinci! Kayla said in utter exasperation. Why didn't you say that before? You didn't ask about potential consequences, Madame, Macavinci replied apologetically. Fine. From now on, if you think something would be a bad idea, say so right away, whether I ask about it or not. Kayla looked from Macavinci to Wayland. Why would having him swear an oath be a bad idea? A very bad idea, Madame, Macavinci corrected her. It would be a bad idea because combining oaths and magic rarely works out well, even when attempted by an experienced mage. It would be a very bad idea because such an attempt by an inexperienced and completely untrained mage, particularly a potentially powerful one like yourself, has a high probability of immediate disaster and a near certainty of a tragic outcome in the long run. Kayla stared. I'm a powerful mage? Maybe it was that mark of magic, or some, or maybe Waylon and Macavinci were just guessing because they thought she was the daughter of the Dark Lord. She still didn't feel any different. But Macavinci was absolutely right about the completely untrained and inexperienced parts. Right, she said, and several of the worry lines in Waylon's forehead smoothed out. No oaths. She looked at Ricky. Mom, can it tell whether it's better to go with this kidnapper or stay on her own? I am not a seer, madame, Macavinci said when Kayla relayed the question. However, following the second commander has a significantly higher probability of a favorable outcome than any other available course of action, at least in the short term. Ricky bit her lip and nodded. I still don't like it, but Kayla's right. We don't have much choice, and the sooner we get there, the sooner we can get home. This way, my lady, Wayland said, pulling his skull mask down over his face once more. He started briskly out of the stone circle, and Kayla and her family followed.